Okay, welcome to this new series of IoT videos on AWS. Now, I haven't done any recordings in a while. I've been busy with projects and other work, but it's the holiday season now, so I'm going to give you a whole bunch of very exciting videos. Going from this one, which is going to be a synchronized website using IoT data coming in, then I'm going to move to asynchronous, then I'm going to move to asynchronous with WebSockets and MQTT messaging using the AWS JS SDK on the browser. So things are going to get more complex. Now for this YouTube series, it's going to be a little bit different than what I put on my Udemy course. For Udemy, I add more bells and whistles and I don't upload all my content to YouTube that's on my Udemy course. But this is more advanced content and it's going to get more advanced as this series goes on. So what I realize is a lot of my Udemy students don't stick around for the more advanced content. So I don't want it going to waste. Because I think anybody into AWS IoT is going to really enjoy this series, and there's not a lot else out there that's going to cover these topics. All right, so let's get right into it. Now, the first thing for this video is we're going to be sending IoT data from your device. And in this example, if you've taken my course, you already have code using MQTT or HTTP for the ESP8266, ESP32, or Raspberry Pi to send sensor data to AWS IoT Core. Now don't worry if you don't know how to program an embedded device to send IoT data to AWS. I'm just going to fake the data here either through a script or on the MQTT test console. I'm going to show you both ways. So having said all that, let's get started with the video. So the first thing I need to do is set up an S3 bucket. And the S3 bucket is gonna first of all hold our IoT data that we're sending from our device or faking from the MQTT test client. And the second thing our S3 bucket is gonna do, in the same bucket, it's gonna host a static website to visualize our data with high charts and I might add Google charts as well. So the first thing obviously we're gonna to need to do is create that S3 bucket and we're gonna make it a public bucket. So let's go ahead and do this. And I've already shown in my course how to do an S3 bucket, but what's going to be useful here is after reInvent 2021, they've changed how to do an S3 public bucket. They made it a little bit more difficult, but remember for IoT data that's completely fungible and we're not holding any information we don't want exposed to the world, it's going to be much easier to deal with a public bucket. Now, it's very easy to privatize this bucket, but normally the best way to do that is using CloudFront, and that costs a little bit of money. Now, in my course, I also show you how to effectively doing it with a bucket policy, confining the IP range, but I'm not going to go over that here. We're just going to make a public bucket for our data and our static website. So go ahead and create a bucket. Now, I'm going to create one in my home region, which is US East 1. So let's make an easy name for this. I'm just going to call this s bucket and how about one two two one that should be a unique name worldwide so that shouldn't be an issue the next thing i have to do when this is new is i want to switch over to acl that's the control list enabled so to make this completely public i got to access to acl so go ahead and do this so acl is enabled then the other thing i can do here before i create my bucket is i'm going to not block all public access so on check block all public access and that's all we need to do here and go ahead and create the bucket and it's going to ask you here hey i acknowledge that i'm keeping this public and again aws is super paranoid about making sure you don't have a public bucket unless you explicitly say hey i want a public bucket but that's what we want to do. And they become more paranoid about that within the last three months with this new system. All right, so we created our bucket. And the easiest way to access that newly created bucket is just to hit the creation date up and down. That's the latest one we just created. I'm going to go ahead and click that. And we're still not done because I have to adjust more permissions here. So I'm going to go to the permissions tab. And the first thing I want to do is create a bucket policy. The easiest way to do that to create an all access read only bucket policy is hit edit under bucket policy. And I'm just going to go to here to policy examples and the one I want is grant read only permission to anonymous users. That's fine. Obviously, even though I'm keeping this bucket completely public, I don't want people writing to my bucket. They can just read it and access the website we're going to create. So go ahead and copy that. And I copied that so I can now close this out. And I'm just going to paste it here in my bucket policy. 
And the only thing I need to change here is I need to copy my bucket ARN. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to paste it right here, making sure I do this correctly. And control V that in there. And I want to keep this forward slash everything because that's every key in my bucket needs to be public as well. And go ahead and save those changes. Okay, and then the next thing we have to do is have a course policy. If we don't have a course policy, we're going to get a mixed object error. It has to do with insecurity with accessing cross-domain objects. So this used to be in XML, and now it is in JSON. That's the only change they made that confuses people. They've gotten rid of XML for good reason, and they kept everything consistent by only accepting JSON for course policy. Here's the generic course policy that will work fine. The main thing is it allows all origins. Go ahead and save that. And this policy will also be available on my website, and I'll link that to you. And then we got to do one other thing. we got to access the ACL list. So that's the very last thing we have to do, access control list. And we're going to add everyone can list and read. I'm going to need to check this and go ahead and save those changes. All right, we're all done. Now, finally, we've created our completely public bucket. Great. Go back over here to objects. We don't have any objects yet, but we're about to get some objects. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this tab. That's normally the easiest way I navigate where I don't lose my place. And now I want to go to AWS IoT Core. We're going to create an action, and then we're going to fill our bucket with data. And then I'll split this up into another video. Here I am in AWS IoT Core, action, click rules, and now I'm going to create a new rule. I want to make sure all my other rules are disabled before I do that. My last one here is enabled. I don't like multiple rules running. So go ahead and create a new rule. I'm going to call this S3 uh, put buck. Whatever you want to call yours. It really doesn't matter. Now I'm going to cheat a little bit. So normally I just use this default statement here select everything from the incoming IoT payload, but instead of using a Lambda function to doing it or doing it on the device, I'm gonna use a macro that's built into AWS IoT Core that'll add the timestamp for me. So I'm kind of cheating and just copy that right into there. So it's gonna select the whole payload and it's gonna add something called timestamps, a new field in our JSON incoming payload, and this is the timestamp macro. So there's a whole bunch of macros AWS provides. Timestamp would probably be the most common one, and it'll allow it to do a Unix timestamp directly into our incoming JSON payload. My topic's gonna be out topic. You can call your topic whatever you want. Just make sure you match your topic on your device, or in my case, I'm gonna match this topic on the MQTT test client. Okay, finally, we need to add an action. And the one I'm gonna use for the synchronous web visualization and i'm going to use obviously other things for other ones is going to be the just stick it into an s3 bucket so i'm going to store my incoming iot messages into this s3 bucket you're going to do the same and configure this action and we've already created the bucket that's why i wanted to create the bucket first so go ahead let me refresh this and let's go to the bucket we just created and do you remember the name that's right it was called s bucket 1221 and the key is kind of like your blob file structure, so I'm just going to call this my key. And there's a way to create a data lake, but I'm not going to show that now. With this the way it is now, it's just going to overwrite the data each time I send it. But for this specific synchronous bucket, I'm going to show you why that's fine in the next video. So go ahead and create a role next. I'm just going to use a default role. I'll say my S3 put role. You can call yours whatever you want. We're never going to see it again. And create that role so everything looks good. And go ahead and add this as an action. Great. So we got our rules query statement updated here to add a timestamp. And we're calling that add a timestamp timestamps. And now we're going to store it in that S3 bucket we just created. And go ahead and create the rule. And the only thing we got to do next is to make sure that it's enabled. And normally now it's enabled by default. It didn't used to be, so that makes things easier. But I'll make sure it's enabled anyways. There it is. At least it adds it to the end so we know where it is. Enable S3 put bucket. All right. 
that's enabled. Great. Now we're at our final stage here where we can finally test it. So let's go to the MQTT test client. I'm going to go under here, test, MQTT test client. And I'm going to publish to that topic. Do you remember the name of the topic? It was out topic. And we want to customize our sensor data to what it's going to look like. And it's not going to look like message hello from AWS IoT console. It's going to be temperature. Yours can be different, but then, of course, you're going to have to change it on the web code that I'm going to provide in the next lecture. Let's say temperature equals 44. And somehow I spelled that wrong. All right, temperature. Next one is humidity. Make sure it's in JSON format. That's going to be it. Now, you may be saying, hey, Steve, where's the timestamp? Again, because of how we set up that rules query statement, our timestamp's automatically added. Well, that's cool. All right, let's go ahead and publish that. And let's make sure that got stuck in our S3 bucket here. Now, remember, I can keep publishing this, but since we didn't add it as a data lake, we just used that my key, it's just going to overwrite every time. You're going to see in the next lecture why that's okay. Normally, that's never going to be okay, but in this specific example, it's okay. So let's go ahead back to S3. I should have that object in here if everything worked out. So let's go ahead and hit the refresh. Great, my key's in there. It worked out. And I'm just going to download it to see what it looks like. So go ahead and download it. I don't think there's any way now to visually preview it without downloading it. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to open it with Notepad++. I know I'm not using VS Code. I'm lame, but there's a reason for that. All right. So there's what it looks like. And it worked correctly. 44, 55, and it added that timestamp in Unix automatically for us. So that's pretty cool. That'll help us when we do our graphing in the next lecture. Okay, so I can send it another payload, and of course, it's just going to give us an updated temperature and humidity if we've changed those values, and no matter what, it's going to give us an updated timestamp. And I just called it timestamps because I need that specific literal variable to match our code in the next lecture. All right, so let's move on to the next lecture now that you have this all set up, and then we can actually send this data to our static web page and start visualizing it. And this is going to be no cost or free because it's all serverless. So the whole thing may cost you two cents, probably nothing. And if you're on the free tier, obviously nothing. All right, so let's do that in the next lecture, and I'll see you there.